Before we begin today's Ponder Fun video, we want to introduce to you the Friend Magazine skill for families who use Amazon Smart Speakers. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints released this easy-to-navigate skill designed especially for children to help them come closer to Christ. Now, children can easily use their Amazon Alexa Smart Speakers to listen to stories, play songs, and read along with their Friend Magazine in English or Spanish. The Friend Magazine skill is a simplified version of Gospel Voice, an Amazon Smart Speaker skill introduced in 2020 to make it easier to listen to scriptures, music, and general conference talks. Using the Friend Magazine skill is as simple as a child saying, Alexa, read me a story from the Friend Magazine. Primary General President Susan H. Porter said, This new tool can empower your family to find and listen to inspired content in your home. Peace will be brought into your home and your children will be strengthened as they listen to fun, wholesome content about Jesus Christ. To add the Friend Magazine skill to your Alexa device, just say Alexa open the Friend Magazine or enable it on the Alexa Skills Store on Amazon. There were a few times in the Savior's ministry when he taught about marriage. Matthew chapter 19 and Mark chapter 10 tell us that huge crowds followed Jesus when he taught and healed them by the river Jordan. Pharisees tried to tempt or discredit him in front of so many people, and they asked if it was lawful for a man to put away or divorce his wife for any cause. At this time, Jewish leaders disagreed on the reasons a man could divorce his wife. Some said he should only divorce her if she was unfaithful, while others said it could be for any reason. Jesus asked them, Have ye not read that he made them at the beginning male and female? And shall a man leave father and mother cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. He said what God had joined together, no man should put asunder or cut apart. Jesus asked the Pharisees what Moses had commanded, and they said he had allowed a man to give his wife a writing of divorcement to put her away. He said that Moses had only suffered this because of the hardness of their hearts, even though it had not been this way from the beginning, and according to the Lord's plan of happiness, marriage between a man and woman was meant to be eternal. Jesus told his disciples that anyone who divorced his wife, except in the case of immorality, and married another, committed adultery with her, just as a woman who put away her husband and remarried also committed adultery. The disciples then asked if a husband and wife were stuck in an unhappy marriage and divorce was not an option, was it better not to get married at all? Jesus said that while some could live without marriage, not everyone could, and there were situations when divorce was appropriate and people could remarry. He taught that we should honor and treat marriage and our partners with great respect. Little children were brought to Jesus for a blessing and prayer, but his disciples rebuked them. This displeased Jesus, and he said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. Jesus then took the children into his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. A young man knelt before Jesus and asked, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. The man asked which commandment, and Jesus said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not, honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said that he had observed all these from his youth, and Jesus lovingly told him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross, and follow me. But when the man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Jesus told his disciples, Verily I say unto you, 
How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. A camel was the largest animal the Jews knew, and Jesus used this exaggeration to emphasize how difficult it would be for a rich man to recognize that while he may have become wealthy through his own accomplishments, he might not see that he was poor in spirit, and was as unlikely to humble himself before God as it would be for a camel to crawl through the eye of a needle. This was like Jesus' exaggeration of a moat or splinter that was in another's eye, while one's own eye had a large wooden beam or plank in it. His disciples were exceedingly amazed and asked, Who then can be saved? They may have thought that if the wealthy, outward-appearing righteous Pharisees and scribes were not worthy of heaven, then what hope was there for the poor? And Jesus said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter asked, Behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He said that all who forsake houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, or lands for him, would receive a hundredfold in this time, and inherit everlasting and eternal life in the world to come. Jesus taught that while we may not have to part with all of our worldly belongings or family relations, we must put our relationship with Jesus Christ above all other things. He then taught that heaven's value system is very different than the earth's, and said, But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In Matthew chapter 20, Jesus told a parable about how the kingdom of heaven was like a householder, who went out early in the morning and hired laborers to work in his vineyard for a penny a day. He then went out in the third hour and told people who were standing idle in the marketplace that he would give them what was right if they also worked in the vineyard. They went to work, and he then hired other laborers in the sixth and ninth hours. He went back in the eleventh hour and asked those in the marketplace, Why stand ye here all the day idle? When they told him that no one had hired them, he said, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. That evening the Lord of the vineyard told his steward to call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. All who were hired at the eleventh hour received a penny. But when those who had come earlier also received a penny, they thought they should have received more. They murmured, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden in the heat of the day. The Lord said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. He asked them if it was not lawful to do what he wanted, with what he owned. And if his eye was evil, referring to a Hebrew expression of jealousy and envy, because he was good. Then Jesus said, So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. This parable may have been directed at Peter's earlier question about what his reward would be for forsaking all for God's kingdom. And Jesus taught that no matter when we accept his gospel or how long we work in this life, all who follow him will be given the reward of eternal life. Matthew chapter 20 and Mark chapter 10 tell us that James and John came with their mother to worship Jesus and desired a certain thing of him. He asked what she wanted, and she said, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the one on the left, in glory in thy kingdom. But Jesus said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said they were able to, but he told them, Ye shall drink of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right and left hand is not mine to give, but shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. The other ten disciples heard this, and were moved with indignation. But Jesus said, Ye know that the princes who rule over the Gentiles exercise dominion, lordship, and authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. Whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. For even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. They left Jericho, and a great multitude followed. Two blind men heard Jesus pass by and cried out, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David! 
The multitude rebuked them, and they said they should hold their peace, but they cried louder. Jesus stood still and asked, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. He showed compassion, touched their eyes, and they immediately received sight. They followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Luke chapter 18 tells of a parable of a judge in a city who did not fear God or regarded man. A widow in the city came and said, Avenge me of mine adversary. The judge did not help her for a while, then said to himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. The Lord said to hear what the unjust judge said, and asked, Shall not God avenge his own son elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He told a parable to some who trusted that they were righteous, but despised others. A Pharisee and a publican went into a temple to pray. The Pharisee prayed, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week and give tithes of all I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Many people have asked Jesus Christ, What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life, and what lack I yet? When we ask with faith, he will lovingly answer our questions, and if we follow him and trust in his mercy, his unique answers will lead us to eternal life. And this is Matthew 19-20, through 20, Mark 10, and Luke 18 in the New Testament. Look for hidden images in this video. You can support PonderFun by visiting our Etsy site, PonderFun.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please subscribe to this PonderFun YouTube channel and like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Thanks again for watching and find some time this week to ponder.